Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we are celebrating Cobra Convergence 5. Cobra Convergence 5 runs throughout the month of August in 2020 and each day different YouTubers, bloggers, vloggers uh, and podcasters will be celebrating everything that is Cobra. I'll put a link in the description so you can see what else is going on during August. And here on Toy Ploy we're going to be doing a restoration of these vintage G.I. Joe Cobra televipers. As you can see both of them have been in the wars and they need quite a bit of work to get them up and running again. So let's take a closer look and I'll show you what's wrong with them. Here are the two Tele Vipers that I'm going to be restoring today. This uh, first guy you can see he's all together but he suffers with the sort of standard problem that his pelvis is broken. The front section has been snapped off so we've got to repair that. He's also got a little bit of paint damage to his face. He's uh, missing the tip of his nose and some uh, silver has been worn off his little visor there but otherwise that's actually not a bad figure. It's the guy on the right you can see he needs a fair bit of work he also has a broken pelvis but uh, that's exactly the same problem as that one so we'll deal with that and he's also lost one of his thumbs so that uh, needs to be repaired and that's a little bit more of a fiddly job but certainly something that can be done again got a few little paint scrapes on his face and we'll sort those out uh, and there's some also sort of paint wear elsewhere on the figure so we'll get all of that fixed up as well now the gun as well that i have for these tele vipers is also broken you can see the uh, little uh, handle there has been snapped into we'll try and fix that up up. We're missing the tubing as well that attaches to the backpack so we're going to be replacing that and generally just giving these figures a good once over so that they can be displayed again because at the moment although this guy is sort of partially displayable with a broken pelvis it does look a little bit rubbish uh, but it should be straightforward enough to do so let's just get straight on to it. The first thing to do is to take them apart. Now I'm not going to bother taking these legs apart because those are fine and I'm actually not going to bother taking this top part of uh, this figure apart to start with because it's easier to to work with uh, to repair the thumbs if you've got something more to sort of hold on to if I just work on the arms and it's a sort of small thing to deal with but when it's uh, still attached to the body we can uh, easily go about sort of drilling holes in this which is what we're going to do to sort of rebuild that hand so I'm going to leave that section together but this figure we do need to take apart because we need the pelvis like this so again very simple as with all the GI Joes unscrew the screw in the back of them take that out store it somewhere safe and then pull the figure apart he should come apart fairly straightforward like so and actually this o-ring doesn't look in too bad condition i think this is an original o-ring i will be replacing it with a new one but actually considering the age of that that's not too bad so there's his body apart and we can get to his pelvis as well so these two pelvises need this exactly the same repair and we'll also do the thumb at the same time. For fixing the pelvis we need to insert a small piece of metal to enable us to then mould some milliput on top of it and I've shown you this before it's a very straightforward thing to do. You have to drill a small hole just where the uh, pelvis has broken there and insert something like a piece of paper clip just some sort of metal that uh, enables you to have a bit of structure underneath the milliput and gives it a little bit more force. So we're going to be inserting paper clip into these pelvises but as you can see the thumb is incredible incredibly small it's a very sort of thin part but we still need to build a sort of a substructure a bit of metal again underneath that that gives it some support and for that we are going to be using a staple because everybody has staples you can easily get these from most stationary shops and they're, they're a nice sort of thin piece of metal and something very easy to work with so I've just got a pair of pliers here and I'm going to take off one staple and you can see how thin that is that piece of metal almost nothing there but that will be enough to give some structure to the milliput and give it something to grip onto and it means we can then drill a very small hole so I've got a pin vise here with an incredibly small drill bit in it and that's what we're going to use to drill a hole into the broken portion of his thumb very carefully so I'm going to rearrange the camera so you can see this and I will get this drilled in and then we'll insert a small piece of the staple in there I'll also drill the holes in these and we can get those prepped so that they are ready for doing the sculpting on top of them with this sort of uh, process you've got to just go very slow and very carefully I can see exactly where the break is so I'm going to line up my pin vise drill bit just into the center of that if I possibly can and then start drilling go nice and slowly and drill in as far as you can really because you want the uh, staple to have a good base to be glued into so 
So you can see there, there is a tiny hole drilled into the broken portion of his thumb, which we can now insert a small piece of the staple into and then glue that with some super glue. So here you go, this is a tiny piece of the staple that I've slightly bent and I've cut to be the right size. If I bring in the hand, you can see I can just insert that in there and that should be a good sort of substructure that we can put the milliput onto, but we need to fix that in place. I've just got some super glue here. I'm gonna squidge a tiny amount just onto the end of that. Don't need to have a great deal at all because it's uh, such a small piece of uh, metal. And we can insert that in. Doesn't matter if there's bits of uh, glue sort of around the edge because we will be covering all of that up. So there you go. It looks like he's got a sort of a bionic thumb at the moment. We'll let that uh, super glue set and then we can build on top of it. Uh, in the meantime, we can get the pelvises uh, set up as well. With the pelvis, it's exactly the same process, except I have a slightly bigger drill bit in my pin vise here because obviously the paperclip is a little bit thicker. So again, I'm just going to carefully drill a hole into uh, the sort of the cracked area where the plastic has snapped. On this pelvis, it does seem to be actually a pretty thin piece of plastic there. So it's going to be awkward to get the hole drilled. I should be able to do it. Just have to go extra carefully when it's uh, thin plastic like this. Some of the pelvises on other uh, G.I. Joe figures are a bit thicker, so there's a little bit more leeway. This one seems particularly thin. With the holes drilled in both bits of pelvis, I've now shaped a piece of paperclip to go into each as well. So you can see that's the sort of basic structure that we're going for. Again, this is going to be glued into place. So I've just got some super glue here and we'll stick those in, let that dry. And then we can start constructing the uh, milliput on top of that. So I'll just uh, get my tweezers because these are quite fiddly little pieces to work with. Let's put some uh, super glue onto that. And then we'll leave that to dry. Once the super glue has had time to dry, the wire is then nice and firmly held in place and we can get onto the fun part, which is sculpting the replacement bits over the top. I'm going to be using Milliput, which is a two part sort of modeling putty. I've already mixed that up here. So you can see that is the two parts mixed together. All you'll need for this is a tool, something like a sort of screwdriver or something like that, a nice small flat head on the screwdriver, because you can use that to sort of sculpt quite nice shapes as well as using your fingers. Some water, because uh, if you want to soften and smooth down the surfaces of the Milliput, water works particularly well. A bit of kitchen towel just to wipe your fingers the whole time and a knife to sort of start cutting the milliput up and then you've just got to get sculpting. I'm going to start with the thumb. This is the smallest bit to work on really. It's going to be quite fiddly to do that just because it's such a small area but I think we can make something that looks half decent and once it's all dry we can uh, mix up some paint and get it sort of to match as close as possible in colour but uh, let's just get sculpting.
after a short amount of sculpting, you can see I've managed to get something that looks uh, pretty good. By the time that's set and painted, you will hardly notice that that has been repaired. And with this sort of millipede as well, once it's set, we can do a bit of fine tuning with some small needle files because sometimes it's easier to do that sort of once it's all gone off. Because at the moment, every time you touch it, it moves a little bit. That's especially the uh, problem when you're dealing with these thumbs because they are so small. So I put a little bit too much millipede on there and I will fine tune that once it's all set. But the basic shape, I'm pretty pleased with that. It does look like the thumb. It shouldn't match the thumb on the right hand. The thumb on the left hand is actually slightly thicker and in a slightly different position. So you'll, that's why you'll notice that they don't match quite perfectly because this is trying to match an original version of the thumb. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'll let this uh, fully set. It takes about 24 hours to do that. So we're going to come back to this tomorrow. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. It's now a day later and everything has had time to set and as you can see uh, the millipus has really gone quite solid there and it's looking really quite nice. I'm very pleased with how these have come out. I will do a little bit of fine tuning as you can see I've got my sort of little needle files here and I'm just going to very carefully sort of trim down some of the edges or file down some of the edges just to make them a little bit flatter and a little bit neater because uh, you always need to go use some of this just to sort of modify it a bit and make it the final sort of shape you're going for. But overall the basic shape of those is pretty good. And if we look at the thumb, which was the hardest one, you can see that is uh, not too bad at all. Again, I'll do a little bit of filing on that just to tidy it up and then uh, we'll put some paint on everything. But uh, yeah, but uh, overall, I'm very pleased with how these have come out. So I'll just do this filing and then we need to get the pelvises uh, repainted so we can put the figures together and then do the final paint touch ups. <laughs> We've now got to paint the Miller put so that it matches the plastic used on the original part of the pelvis. And we're gonna be using two different paints here just because I normally would buy Humbrol paints and I've not been able to get a blue in the Humbrol. So I've got a black for, from Humbrol, which is number 33. And I'm using this blue, which is my, made by Vallejo model color. This is 17925 and it's a sort of fairly dark blue. It's not quite dark enough. You can see here, I've uh, squished some out of the bottle. It's a little bit too light. So we're gonna mix the black in and we'll darken that down to get a tone that's much more in keeping with the original Tele Viper sort of darker blue. So we're uh, just going to mix those up till I get something right and we'll paint it on. Now these are both matte paints as well so they have a, a sort of dull finish and uh, once they're dry I'm going to put a coat of uh, number 135 which is a clear top coat. This is a humble uh, clear acrylic top coat. You can get other uh, sort of clear acrylics that will do the same job and this will give it a slight sheen so that it matches the nice shininess of the original plastic. But first up we've got to put the blue on. had time to dry now and you can see here the front of that's not looking too bad at all it's a tad darker than uh, the sort of original plastic but I think by the time you've got the legs in place that you will hardly notice that so I'm not going to repaint it you could if you wanted to sort of uh, mix a little bit more white in and uh, sort of tone it down a little bit but I think actually that's uh, a pretty good match so we're just going to put these back together I've shown this many times before I've got some replacement o-rings here just to take the figures apart new o-rings put everything back and then we can do the rest of the paint touch-ups and also paint his finger here and sort of repair bits of his nose and any other chips that are on this sort of paint on this figure but first of all let's get him put back together <music> For 
of the Tele Viper's hand, the sort of flesh colour, I'm going to be using a base of uh, 61, which is a humble acrylic, which is uh, sort of their standard flesh colour. It tends to be a little bit too sort of vibrant for uh, this sort of flesh colour. You can see it's a little bit more muted. So I have some white here that I can mix in as well. And also because this is uh, sort of all made out of plastic, it might be it needs a little bit of yellow going in just to sort of tone it to match the sort of yellow that is in this plastic. So I've also got some Vallejo model colour. Uh, this is just called flat yellow and it's number 70.953. I'm just going to mix those up until I get a colour that matches. It will also then match the chip on this guy's nose. You can see that he's missing just the very tip of his nose, but these two sort of colours match pretty closely. So if I get one right, I get all of them right. So let's start mixing. We'll see what I can get. definitely needed some of the yellow adding to it and I've also watered it down a bit so that I can paint a little bit further up the hand otherwise you end up with a very obvious line but you can see actually now that that's done that's a pretty good match I'm very happy with that it's still got to dry and we still need to then put the sort of clear coat over the top of it but that does match very nicely and likewise the little tip of his nose there I've just put a bit on it's a little bit light at the moment when this dries it will dry just a tad darker and we'll also put the top coat on that I think that looks quite nice it certainly looks a lot better than having a little black tip to the end of his nose so I'm happy with that now we can move on to touching up the bits of silver paint that need repairing on the lenses here and also the belt buckles for the silver I'm actually going to be using a pen that I've never used before normally I would use the uni5 paint pens or the edding paint pens but both of mine had run out and I went down to the local shop to see what I could find and they just had these Sharpie silver markers. I've done a couple of tests of them and they actually seem quite nice. You can see here if I just write on there it does give quite a nice sort of painted silver finish so I'm assuming this is roughly the same as uh, what the Edding pens and the Unify pens are like that I've used before. Uh, so let's just give this a go. I've, you can see here on the top of his visor there's a little bit of a scuff so let's see what happens when I touch this up. Oh, that's actually very good. It's a very close match. You can hardly tell that I've uh, put some paint pen on there. So that's nice. I like that. I'll just do the other side. You can see there's a little bit of a scratch there as well. And then also the belt buckles of these are supposed to be silver with a couple of little dots either side. I think if I'm careful, yeah, I can just touch those up as well. Not going to go too mad on that. Yeah, just a little bit of silver paint on there really helps. So we'll do the same on this one as well. I don't think his visor has so much damage going on. There's a little bit of a chip there. And then we'll do his belt buckle as well. But I think that silver pen is quite, uh, yeah, quite good. Now there's one area that I don't actually need to touch up but if you do uh, I can sort of recommend a paint for it and that's these sort of purple areas that cover large parts of the Tele Viper. There's a few tiny little rubs on his feet but really they're very hard to notice. I'm not going to bother touching up the paint on mine but if you need to then I would suggest using this colour. This is another uh, Vallejo model colour. This is uh, 17960 and it's called Violet. It's a little bit bright so if you mix it with some black you'll get a colour that matches this and then just add a top coat over the top again and you'll get the same sort of shininess but that is a pretty good match if you need to touch the purple sort of paint up on the Teddy Viper but as I say this one's got very minor wear to the paint so I'm not going to bother I don't think this one's got any at all so yeah I think I'm just going to leave those as is and we'll class those figures as all sort of touched up and done. Now you know and knowing is half the battle. 
The Televipers come with a backpack, as you can see here. They also come with this VS11 scanner, which should attach to the backpack via a hose. And as I showed you at the start, this uh, scanner has got a slight break in the back of it. And we're going to try and fix that. The, fixing this plastic is not always the easiest thing because it's a very soft plastic that bends. But I think a little bit of super glue on there might help just to hold that together. Um, and to do that, uh, getting super glue onto small areas like this is a little bit of a pain, but there is a trick to it. What you need is to get the super glue, put it onto a bit of paper and then apply it using something like a pin. You can see here I've just got a pin or a small piece of wire. That way you have much more control about how you apply it to the surface. So if I squeeze out some of this super glue, we can then try and apply it and see if it will work. So there you go, I've got a small amount of super glue. What I'm going to do is I could prise these two pieces open and we'll get a small bit of super glue on the end. You can see I've just got a very small amount of glue on the end of that pin and that gives us much more control. If you try and apply it from the nozzle of the super glue sort of dispenser, it goes everywhere. But if you use a pin like this, you can really sort of carefully just put it where you need it. Do the same on that bit just in the middle. So I've got a tiny amount on both of those bits and we can now push that together. As I say, this may not hold, but it's uh, worth doing. And if you just put a small amount on, it's really not going to show that much. So we'll just let that set. I was able to find two others of these scanners, but uh, unfortunately not in black plastic. So I've got the grey versions and one of those will do very nicely to uh, go in the other Tele Viper figure. Now all we need is a bit of tubing that connects this to the backpack. And that's very easy to find. If you go onto eBay and search for jewellery tubing, you'll find stuff like this, which is very cheap. I've got five metres of it here and it's almost a perfect match for the missing tubing. It's about two millimetres in diameter. So all I've done, I've cut two 10 centimetre lengths of this tubing and that should fit very nicely onto the little peg on the bottom of the scanner and also onto the bottom of the backpack just like that. So we can now add these to the figures and they are all done. And here we go, here are the final two figures. I'm really pleased with how they came out. A lot of these fixes are fairly straightforward. It just takes a little bit of practice to get them right. You can see here that the thumb uh, really is a very good match. It's uh, hard to tell that that has actually been repaired with some milliput and a staple, but uh, as you can see, it looks really very nice. Likewise, his pelvis is a very good match. Now that everything is sort of put back together, you'd really have hard to uh, even notice that that had been repaired. And I've ended up with two very nice looking televipers that I can put on display here at Toy Polloi. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And do make sure to check out everything else that is going on with Cobra Convergence 5. I'll put a link in the description, so go and check that out. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Polloi. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Polloi on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.